This is part 64 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to save data using ASP.NET Web Services and jQuery Ajax. So here is what we want to achieve. So using this form, we are going to enter employees data. And then when we click this add employee button, we want to post this form data to the ASP.NET Web Service using jQuery Ajax. And then we want that ASP.NET Web Service to save this data to the database table. And once the data is saved to the database table, we want to display the records, you know, all the records basically that are available in the employee table in a table as you can see here. So as soon as we add an employee, we want to display that newly added employee record in this table. So let's see how to achieve this. We will be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the last video session. So this is how the form looks like at the moment. So at the moment, we are retrieving all the employees from the database table using jQuery Ajax. Now, the first thing that we'll have to do is create a stored procedure, which is going to insert employee data to the database table. And in the interest of time, I have already created that stored procedure. So this stored procedure here has got three parameters and the implementation is straightforward. Insert into employees table and the values you know, that we want to insert are coming as parameters, so name, gender, and salary. So straightforward insert stored procedure there. The next step is to write the web service method, which is going to add the employee data to this database table by calling this insert employee stored procedure. So at the moment, within the table, we have got four rows, and that's what are displayed here. And this stored procedure is going to insert the employee data into that table. All right. So now let's go ahead and add that web service method. So here I'm actually going to make a copy of this get all employees method. So we don't have to type all the sadio.net code again. So let's make a copy of this. So let's call this method add employee. And to this function, we are going to pass employee object. Let's call it EMP. And we don't need to create a list, so let's get rid of that. So we read the connection string from web.config file, create a new SQL connection object, and next create a SQL command object. And we want to call the stored procedure using that SQL command object. So since this command is executing a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object using the command type property. So command type equals stored procedure. And if you look at the stored procedure, it has got three parameters. So we need to add those three parameters to the command object. So I'm going to create a new, so to the command object, to the parameters collection, add a new SQL parameter object. So there are four overloaded versions here. We're going to use this overloaded version where we create a new SQL parameter object and then specify the properties that we need. So basically we need to specify the parameter name. So parameter name equals, so the first parameter is name at name. And where is the parameter value going to come from? It's going to come from this employee object. So value for this parameter is going to come from the employee object that is coming into this function. And we are going to use the name property. Similarly, we need to add parameters for gender and salary. And in the interest of time, I have already typed that code. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it right there. So this stored procedure has got three parameters and we are associating all those three parameters to the command object. The next step is to open the connection. Now we are going to insert data so we don't require a SQL data reader. So I'm actually going to get rid of all this code from here. We're not going to send anything back to the client so I'm going to remove this as well. So we want to open the connection and execute the command. So command dot, since this is an insert command, I'm going to call execute non-query. Okay, so very straightforward 
add employee method which is going to insert the employee data into the database table. Now all that is left is we want to post the form data using jQuery to this ASP.NET web service method. So let's see how to do that. So that's our web service method. Now let's go back to our HTML, page one.html. At the moment, the page looks like this. Now we want to first design the page so the UI looks like this. So we need the table which displays the employee records, but we don't need get all employees button. So I'm going to actually delete this get employees button and you know one of the break elements. And now we need to design a table which looks like this to capture employee data. And again, in the interest of time, I have already typed that HTML, so let's copy that and paste it just above this break element. Okay, so again, this is straightforward HTML. We've got a table element and it has got one, two, three, and four TRs. So we are capturing name, gender, salary, and then we have a button which says add employee. And the ID of the button is btn add employee. So let's save the changes and let's reload this page. So at this point, this is how the form looks like. The moment we click add employee, we want to post this form data to the database, uh, you know, basically to the web service, and we want the web service to post the data to the database table. And upon inserting, we want to again retrieve all the records that are there in the table and display them in this table below this form. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So when we click add employee button, that's when everything should happen. And that add employee button has gotten a ID, btn add employee. So let's grab that ID. So here we are associating the click event handler to add employee button. All right, so now another thing that I'm going to do is I am going to actually move this Ajax function call. So basically, this is going to retrieve all the employees from the database table. So, and here is the closing of that Ajax function call. So I'm actually going to move all this code into its own function. So I'm going to cut that and you know, within our ready function, I'm going to create another function. Let's call this get all employees and I am going to paste that Ajax function call within this and we are going to use this function get all employees wherever we need it all right okay so when we click add employee button what should happen we want to issue an Ajax call and post the form data right and before that we need to you know basically capture whatever details the user has entered on this form. So I'm actually going to create a variable here and I'm going to call this employee. You can give it any name you want, but I'm going to call it employee. I'm going to create an empty JavaScript object here. And this to this object, I'm going to add some dynamic properties. So first I want name. So this is going to contain the name of the employee. And where are we going to get the name from? We're going to get that from this text box. And this text box has got an ID, txt name. So let's use that ID, find the text box, and then retrieve the value that the user has typed. So find the text box by the jQuery ID selector and get the value out of it. Similarly, we need to do the same thing for gender and salary. So here, property name is going to be gender and gender value is present in txt gender text box. Similarly, salary is present in salary text box. So copy that and the text box name is going to be txt salary. All right, so here we have the employee object and the respective properties of that object has got the values that we want to send to the ASP.NET Web Service method. Now we are going to issue an Ajax call. So I'm actually going to make a copy of this code right here and change it as we need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste that code here. So we are making a call to the Ajax function. So the URL that we want this data to be posted to is employeeservice.asmx, that's our web service. And within that web service, we have got this add employee method. So that's the function to which we want to post the data. So post the data to that add employee function. And if you look at that add employee function, it is expecting an employee object to be passed. And EMP is the name of the parameter. All right, so now that's the URL to which we want to post the data. 
and we're not going to get any data back from that function so I'm going to remove this data type option so we want to issue a post request so the method is going to be post and I'm going to specify the content type that we will be sending to the server we're going to actually send a JSON string so I'm going to set content type to application forward slash JSON and I'm also going to specify character set equals UTF-8 okay so using this content type option we are specifying that we will be sending a JSON string so that means the data that we are sending to the server should be converted to a JSON string okay so I'm going to send a JSON string so I'm going to use you know open and close curly braces and here we are the name of the parameter that the employee web service add employee web service method um, expects is EMP so to that we want to append you know this employee object this is an object so we need to convert that to a JSON string so I'm going to use JSON dot stringify method so JSON dot stringify and to this we are going to pass the employee object so that's going to convert that employee object to a JSON string here we have the opening brace that's the name of the parameter which add employee web service method expects and then we want to close the closing brace so plus let's close that so basically that is the data that we want to send to the server so that entire thing forms a JSON string okay and on success we want to call this function we're not going to get any data back so I'm going to remove that parameter it's of no use to us and I'm going to remove all this implementation here and on success what do we want to do we want to retrieve all the employees that are already there in the database table including the new record that we have added and display them in the uh, table on the form okay so let's call this get all employees function to retrieve all the employees from the DB and if there is an error we want to alert that error so pretty straightforward Ajax request there to post the data to the server so let's go ahead save the changes and let's actually build this because we have changed the web service method as well so build succeeded let's go ahead and reload this page now let's go ahead and enter an employee name Sarah let's say female is the gender and let's say 75,000 is her salary so let's go ahead and add employee look at that Sarah is added okay so look at how fast it adds and reloads data so all this is done through Ajax here is the web service method and here is the jQuery code thank you for listening and have a great day